Well, hello and welcome back to the specimen series. The weather is warming up nicely now. My bream kit has been put away and I've got my tench rods out. So I've come over to Billingford Lakes in Norfolk. And I'm gonna try and catch a few nice tench for the cameras. Like a lot of day tickets around the country, you can't actually get on the complex till seven o'clock in the morning. And if I arrived at seven o'clock in the morning, by the time I found a swim, set up and baited up, I've missed that prime bite time. So that's the reason why I've got to the lakes this afternoon. I've had a good look round. I've had the marker float out to find some nice spots because I want to be all in the swim, in place, baited up, ready for prime time at first light tomorrow. Well, you may have seen me target gravel pit tench before on the specimen series, and my favourite way to fish for them is with the inline maggot feeders and maggots as hook baits. But having fished this venue before, I normally have lots of roach present in the swim, so those maggot feeders, the hook baits would get stripped off straight away by the roach. So this time I'm fishing method feeders, and I'm using little yellow wafters as hook baits to make those rigs more roach proof. Then on top of those feeders, I'll spot a mixture of pellets, hemp, sweet corn, and when I go tench fishing, I have to involve red maggots somewhere, so I'll put a few red maggots in the mix as well. Well, as I mentioned, I've had the marker float out and I've found a spot that I'm happy with, and I've put about a dozen to 15 spawns on that spot. And the key to success with this style of fishing is accuracy. So I've got the marker sticks out, I've marked the lines with marker elastic so I can land those method feeders nice and neatly every time I recast them. So I'm really happy with those rods, they're fishing as neat as they can be. And Chris has promised me a barbecue in a little while, so we might get attention before it gets dark, but otherwise we're gonna chill out and enjoy the burgers. It's been an absolutely gorgeous evening and the barbecue was good as well, but no tench to report. I've seen a little bit of fizzing this evening, but I haven't had any takes. I'm gonna leave the rods out until it gets dark, but I will reel them in at night. I find with tench fish and I'd rather reel the rods in, get some quality sleep, because I need to be up at first light when them tench are really on the feed. So I'll have those rods in at the minute. Wish me the best of luck and I'll catch up with you in the morning. Well, that hasn't took long this morning. I've put the rods back out at first light. I've decided not to spawn any bait as yet. I think there's probably bait already out there, but last night I did change one of the rods over to a maggot feeder. I really like using maggots and I haven't had any bother from roach and it's the maggot rod that's decided to go. So maybe maggots will be the way after all. Well, they're gonna concentrate because this one's gone under both the other rods. It feels like quite a nice tench. Knit one pearl one, I think, as if we had to get a bite this morning. The amount of fish that are rolling in front of me. Well, he's not a big tench, but more importantly, it's a bite and then we're off the mark. 
Well, that's a nice confidence booster to get those rods out first thing and to get a bite quite quickly. And it was the maggot feeder, as I mentioned, that went. I absolutely love using maggots for tench. The only reason I haven't put all rods on maggots is I just assumed those roach would be a nuisance. But if I get another bite on this rod, there's a strong chance one of those method feeders will be swapped for a maggot feeder as well. So sometimes it's a little bit about trial and error. And with three rods, you can always take a bit of a gamble and try a few different methods. Right, let's get that rod cast back out. There are a lot of very small tench in this lake. I found that last spring when I fished it, but amongst these little ones, there are one or two big ones. So it's nice to be catching some tench, but this one's about eight pound too small in my books. Come on, little fella. Well, there we go, perfection in miniature. Not quite the size we wanted, but tench number two of the morning. Yeah, got another one, Chris. <laughs> a little bit better. I'm going to pop this one on the scales because I think it's probably around seven pound. And I, I lied when I was playing. I thought it was a male tench, but it turns out it's a female tench. But it's definitely quite a bit bigger than those first two small ones. I thought it looked as if it was a seven pound, a seven pound six, that one, so they're getting bigger. That's the main thing. Well, I definitely want the maggots this morning. That's three nil to that maggot rod. Well, I've got a feeling if it keeps going like this, there might be a trip to Angling Direct now to get some more maggots because I didn't bring loads with me. Well, that's much more like it. They're the sort of tench I like chasing in the spring. It might not be enormous, but it's twice as big as those little ones I had first thing. I'm quite keen to get that maggot feeder back out there as quickly as I can, because it seems as if they're really on it. Every time I repositioned that maggot feeder, the bites came really quickly. Not very happy. In my experience, early mornings in the spring and tench fishing are definitely bite time. <laughs> monkey. Well the action on that maggot rod is absolutely manic. As soon as I cast it out it's just bite after bite. Poor old Chris the cameraman, he just wants his morning cup of tea but I'm making the most of this real hectic spell because sometimes when that sun gets up in the sky the tench can go off the feed so I'm going to catch as many tench as I can just in case they do go off the boil. It's a bit of a relief, it had that hectic spell from first light till about seven o'clock in the morning and it's now coming up to about eight o'clock and this is the first bite I've had for about an hour. I was concerned in these calm, brighter conditions that they'd go off the boil a bit during the daytime, but I'm really pleased to get this bite. I put a little bit more bait out with the spawn earlier, whether that slowed things up, but I, I felt I needed to top the swim up. 
the line bites had stopped, the fish had stopped rolling. And I decided to put about three or four spawns of bait out to try and jump start the swim again and it seems to have worked. Are you done? I think you're done. Well, once I netted this fella, the hook fell out whilst he was resting in the net. So I've taken the opportunity to cast that rod straight back on the spot. I had loads and loads of bites, one after another, from first light till about seven o'clock in the morning. And then it's gone really quiet, and this is the first bite I've had in about an hour. So it builds my confidence. It makes me feel there could be a few daytime bites on the cards. But one thing that has happened, I haven't had any bites on those flat method feeders. It's all been about the maggot rod. So I'm gonna reel that middle rod in. I'm gonna put it on a maggot feeder as well. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you that maggot rig and show you exactly what's been doing the business. I'll slip this fella back. And I'll swap that middle rod over and I'll show you that maggot rig. Well, I promise you I will show you that maggot rig in a minute, but what a lovely interruption and what a crack in tench. I'm going to slip this straight back. I'll get that maggot feeder threaded on that middle rod and we'll talk you through the rig. Well, as I promised, I'm going to show you the rig that's done all the bites so far this session, and that's the inline maggot feeder rig. I've got one of the Drennan inline maggot feeders with a tiny 10 pound fluorocarbon hook link. That's probably about four inches long to a size 10 hook. And I've got one fake maggot over the eye of the hook, maggot liner style. I think it kicks the hook out nicely and it adds a little bit of attraction to your hook bait as well. I'll hook four to five maggots on the hook. And then the last thing I do on the rig, rather than having any rig tubing or a leader, I fish it straight on the main line, but I add a little blob of tungsten putty about three foot above the feeder just to pin that main line down. But I'm quite keen to get this maggot feeder filled back up and get it on the spot because those tents are still really on the feed. But it's been a really enjoyable day today and those bites kept coming steadily all morning into the early afternoon although it has quietened off a little bit now so i'm going to change the hook bait on one rod i've been fishing maggots on all three rods but i'm going to put a worm kebab rig on here now the worm kebab has probably been one of the most popular tench baits in the last year or two and i've only used it a few times myself but the fish that i have caught on it have been quite big fish so it might make that difference so i'm going to go and cast this rod back out but before i cast it out i'm going to talk you through the hardware that i'm using Well, whilst I'm sinking the line, I'll quickly mention the rod and the reel that I'm using. I'm using an Advanta Discovery RVS twin tip, and I've got the pound and three quarter section on the top, then I've got an 8,000 size Shimano bait runner on there. Then that bait runner is loaded with some 10 pound line, and I find that perfect for this style of tench fishing. During the afternoons and into the evening, the bites definitely dried up. But that didn't matter, it gave us the opportunity to just soak up the atmosphere of that lovely spring evening and watch the carp put on a real impressive show. I planned to leave the rods out just into dusk, but I like to reel the rods in overnight so that I'm up bright and early after a few hours quality sleep because I'm expecting more bites at dawn.
Well, good morning, and what an absolutely lovely morning, and what a brilliant start. It's amazing the difference between the afternoon fishing and the early morning fishing. I've woke up early this morning, I've put all three rods out, and less than five minutes, this lovely tench has picked up the worm kebab rod. So I think we're going to get another flurry activity, or I hope we're going to get another flurry of activity, the same as yesterday morning. More than that, I hope I can connect one of these lakes really big tench. Another absolutely beautiful looking tench. This has been about the average size this morning and it's absolutely great fun. Have to steer a tench. That second morning, the average size of the tench was definitely bigger, and this made me feel I was closer and closer to that slightly bigger tench still. And then finally I connected with a fish that I could see as it went into the net was the fish that we were after. Well at last I've managed to catch a tench over the magical eight pound barrier. I felt it was on the cars with so many bites and I knew that these size fish were in here. It might not be massive by national standards, but whenever I'm tench fishing, a fish over eight pound looks fairly big to me. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It probably is time to start packing up now for me. It's been a great trip. And if you did like the video, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We're getting one more bite.